Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to be very briefly introducing some stuff with Microsoft Excel. Um, there's a lot of really cool features that you can do in Excel. Uh, I believe actually some, some of the stuff in this uh, particular spreadsheet that I'll go through might be a little bit over what we're covering in this class, but I kind of wanted to give you an end picture of some of the different ways that we can actually use it. Just give you a picture of like, hey, once you are familiar with Excel, this is something you can do. I really enjoy this program a lot. I think spreadsheets are really neat and Excel itself has a lot of really powerful tools in its formulas, which I'll actually show you how I use these formulas specifically with regards to this class in a way that directly affects you. So. Without further ado, let me talk about it. In this class, we talk a lot about data and information. And Excel is wonderful specifically in how it works with what's known as quantitative data and quantitative information. Quantitative refers to numbers measuring something. So when we're talking about, say, in this case, uh, I have my participation log right here. This isn't the actual participation log for the section that you, the student, are in. This is a uh, sample participation log for a four-week class where uh, I mark when that particular student showed up doing that particular participation with a one, and if they didn't show up, I marked it with a zero. So it's a uh, very I guess, restricted type of quantitative measure. In this case, I'm measuring whether or not they're here using two values, one and zero, but it can be really useful. Let's say you're working with a whole bunch of cities, you're working with their populations, the number of cars that are in their cities, maybe the uh, amount of uh, traffic in those cities, you're doing some kind of traffic related project and you're trying to look at cars number of cars in the city versus the number of people trying to see if you can make any conclusions on how that might be affecting traffic uh, you could get some sort of things like every city of city's ratio of the number of people it has to the number of cars it has if it's really close to one maybe that would tell you hey uh, this city needs to start thinking about trying to incentivize public transportation trying to incentivize people carpooling all that kind of stuff. Um, that would be an example of quantitative measures. You're measuring population, you're measuring number of cars, and you're measuring that ratio between number of people to number of cars in order to get some information about what things that might be causing traffic in that city. It also has really useful uh, tools like statistical analysis. You can do graphs in here so you can actually graph data about your business or something like that you could in the cars versus people example you could graph every city's like ratio of people to cars you could actually sort all the cities based on the number of cars that they have there's a lot of options there that allow us to then get information out of our data which is something that is a pretty big theme in this chapter, data and getting information out of it. Now, Excel is an example of what's known as a spreadsheet program. There's a lot of different spreadsheet programs out there. Um, Google has one in Google Drive. There's LibreOffice Calc. There's all kinds of other ones. Uh, Excel happens to be the one in Microsoft Word. A spreadsheet uh, organizes data in a two-dimensional area. So there are rows of data. This is the horizontal line of data right here. Rows will usually represent a certain um, entity that you're trying to look at the data of in a spreadsheet. So for example, you know, I, I have what's known as a header row here. This row just gives you information about what's in every column. But then I have a row for student A, a row for student B, a row for student C, and a row 
for student D, just like that. You also have columns, and the columns are typically attributes. They are qualities that the entities, that you know, every row that you're measuring is a specific entity. The columns are entities that or are attributes that all of the entities share. In my case, this is whether or not they participated, you know, whether or not they showed up to class week one, day one, whether or not they showed up to class week one, day two, week two, week two, day one, week two, day two, week three, day one, week three, day two, and so on and so forth. So the column itself represents the participation for that particular class for all the students. And then where you have a row and a column intersect is known as a cell. So this cell right here is the intersection of the student A row and the week one, day one column. And that represents student A's participation on week one, day one. In the city example, a row would probably be the actual city, the information about that city. The columns would be population, number of cars, uh, cars to people ratio, all that kind of stuff. And an individual cell would be something like, say, New York City's population or Los Angeles's cars to person ratio. So those terms are really important. You have row, column, cell. This whole thing, the entire document here, is known as a sheet. And if you look down here, I have a whole bunch of tabs with different sheets on them. I can click through them and get different pieces of information that I've stored. In this case, this is participation over the help boards that we have go up every week. The help boards, uh, you know, week one help board, week two help board, week three help board, all that kind of stuff. If anybody posts uh, even a single post in there, I put a one in this sheet. Uh, let me actually increase the size of these as well, just for clarity and to match everything up a little bit better. Anyway, uh, that's something you can do. Actually, you can uh, change the size of your columns, uh, which will be very helpful for text. You know, when you're typing text in here, if your column's too small, it's going to look a little bit weird, so you can readjust the size of the columns. Uh, but yeah, you have multiple sheets here. The entire document is called a workbook. So the workbook contains multiple sheets. Every sheet contains multiple rows and multiple columns with data inside of them. So that's the Excel terminology here. But yeah, there's all kinds of uses for Microsoft Excel. Personally, I have used it in my uh, college chemistry classes. I used it to record pieces of data about experiments and then uh, present those pieces of data using graphs. I use it to calculate bills. I live in a house with a number of people and based on the bills that we get and the times that every person in the house is actually present in the house, because, uh, you know, if someone is gone for a week, we don't want them to have to pay bills that they didn't actually, you know, contribute to. So based on all that, I can, I, I built up a spreadsheet where all I have to do is put in the weeks that people were at the house and then put in the cost of the bill. And it automatically calculates everyone's correct, um, everyone's correct contribution that they need to make for when it comes time to actually pay the bills. And then, of course, I have stuff for education work, like my uh, participation log that you're looking at right now. Now, the participation log really gets into the use of formulas, which are deceptively powerful, I want to say. Um, and we're not going to get into the crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. I'll show you the wild stuff that's in here that I do to make my life easier. But it's not something that you're going to have to worry about or that's even necessary. I did spend about two hours setting this thing up so that I wouldn't have to type out week one, day one, week one, day two, week one, two, day one, week two, day two, et cetera, et cetera, all by hand. I did spend way too much time creating a formula to do it, but I find that stuff fun. What does that say about me? Who knows? Anyway, what I have is first off the, the um, sheet that contains class attendance. You'll see I have 
these all formatted in different ways. I have this as a header and all of this is input data. Input data being data that I specifically type in myself. This input data is going to reflect the actual student's attendance and I input that into here and that will be used in the calculation. And there's a reason why I use the number one and the number zero instead of saying something like present or not present using words like that. It makes the calculations a lot simpler because I'm actually doing a lot of math when it comes to this. I have the help board, very similar thing. I have my headers here and I just have data that I put in manually based on people's actual uh, participation. Now, what I have to do for every student and for every, um, for every student and for every uh, day of class and every week of the help board, I have to add all of those up. I have to add up everything here. This gets a little bit tricky because in this sheet, B1, or sorry, B2 represents uh, student A for week one, C2 represents student A for week two, D2, or D, yeah, D2 represents student A for week three, and so on. With class attendance, this gets a little different because week one is represented by both B2 and C2, week two is represented by D2 and E2, week three is represented by F2 and G2, and so on. So I, I, I had to do some math. It was a lot of math, but I have this. And this participated this week. You can see the formula that I typed in up here. It's very long. Let me do this, actually. Um, we'll do this so that you can see Right now, what this is showing is the total number of times this student participated in this particular week. We have student A who participated twice in week one. Let's see where they participated. They posted once in the help board and they, posted, and they attended class once on the first day of class. They did not attend week one, day two. Of course, not a problem. That just doesn't get counted for participation. Then, Week two, student A went to both class sessions and posted to the help board. Week three, only one of those it was week three, day one, looks like. Week four, participated in the help board. Yep, right there. B doesn't show up as much. Uh, actually, B has not touched the help board, uh, so they only showed up week one, day two. And week three, day one, no judgment, of course. Um, C has done everything, uh, showed up every day of class, and posted at least once in the help board. And then D has done none of the participation, which of course doesn't necessarily mean anything. They could still be doing fantastic on the assignments and not think they need any help, and that's totally fine. That's why this is extra credit and not actual assignment credit, right? Now, what you'll remember, you know, I count how many times they participate here, but what you'll remember is that I only really care if you participated at least once during the week. It doesn't matter if you participate one time, two times, three times, whatever, as long as you participated at least once, you essentially get a check mark for that week. So what I, what I do is I modify my formula here um, to do that. And right now, we're not going to worry about this. We're not going to worry about this equation because there's a lot... There's a lot of stuff going on here that I I had to do some weird things in order to make this work. It was very fun weird things for me, but it was very weird things nonetheless. Uh, the fact... Specifically, the fact that these are... Um, this misalignment between week one, day one, week one, day two, like all the, the two days per week here versus the one slot per week here. 
this misalignment made things very complicated in a very interesting way. Uh, but I use formulas for all of this kind of stuff here. And then essentially what I have is a check mark for have you participated this week? If yes, you get one. If not, you get zero. It's just a check mark. That's all it really is. But you'll see that student C has put in more effort in terms of the participation stuff, but student A and student C have part essentially participated the same amount because I only really count if you have done it, if you have done at least one of those participations. Um, now, student A putting in all that extra effort might do well and uh, might do better in other areas of, of the class. Why not? Who knows? Maybe they just needed the extra help and they're taking advantage of it. Totally fine. Uh, your time is, it is up to you to decide how you spend your time and I do not believe in shaming anyone for that. So now that I have these check marks, I can go to the actual, like, where I calculate the participation, which is the total participation worksheet right here. Now, I have this final score, which takes the total participation from the previous area, from this participated this week. I essentially just add up all the ones here. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, 1 plus 1 is 2, all that kind of stuff. That's where these numbers come from. And then I adjust it. The reason why I have the adjustment, so in my 16 week classes, I do a maximum of 12 weeks where participation actually counts. And the reason why I do that is to make all the point values and stuff line up nicer in my syllabus. So once you hit 12 weeks of participation, continuing to participate doesn't give you any additional extra credit. 12 weeks already gives you the full 5% um, extra credit. It also helps because it means you can miss a week. You know, if you can't show up to class one of the weeks and you're not able to post on the help board that week, you can still get that full 5% extra credit of the participation bonus. So what I do is uh, six, for a 16-week class, I use a 12, maximum of 12 uh, weeks where participation counts towards that. So the actual equivalent of that here would be three. If I have a four week class, I would do three participation points. And you'll see what this adjusted participation does is if someone gets more than the maximum number of weeks that I count, then it just sets it to three. But if I get less, then it doesn't change it at all, which is a little bit of a smart thing that you can do in Excel specifically using formulas. You can see that I have a minimum function right here. Uh, the, now I'll sidetrack. A function specifically is something that takes in inputs and produces a output such that if I give it the same two inputs, it will always, or you know, the same inputs, it will always produce the same output. So for example, um, oh, when I have the min function right here, the minimum function takes in two inputs. Actually, it takes in multiple inputs. It could take three, four, five, etc. But it takes in multiple inputs and it returns the smallest value between the two. Uh, so in this case, it'll take in whatever value is in this cell and also this maximum participation week. Sorry, it takes in whatever value is in this, these cells right here and then the maximum participation week possible number right here. Um, so in this case, uh, for this cell, it's looking at B2 versus the max number right here. Four is larger than three, so it will put in three. However, with a, a, with a B3 right here, uh, B3, um, with B3, two is less than three, so it will put three right here, and so on and so forth. That's a quick sidebar. That's what a function is. It's a very important term, so I highly recommend you Keep in mind what a function is. I'll be using it quite a bit uh, when helping people with Excel. But then, yeah, uh, I have I get the suggested participation so that the participation number is no more than the maximum right here, and then I calculate the final score by multiplying the suggested participation by the number of points per participation week, which is five. And in our um, sixteen-week classes, the maximum 
points you would be able to get is 12 times 5, which is 60 points. But then once I have this final score, this is the actual thing that I will be inputting into Canvas uh, at the end of the term. And that's the extra credit you can assume you're getting. Now, one of the benefits of using formulas is it makes it a lot easier if I need to, say, add in more students. So let's say I now have student E, who showed up all the time. Why not? Right? Uh, student E was also excellent with uh, using the forums, like so. So I have all this user input data for this extra student. And for participated this week, there's nothing yet. However, what I can do is sort of copy this formula, which has references to the current cell that it's in, by the way. Um, and I can paste it and those update because now it recognizes, oh, well, see, like there's a little B5 here and a B5 here and it recognizes, oh, well, I'm not in B5, now I'm in B6. And it's able to change the calculations based on the actually recognizing which uh, cell it's in, which row and column it has. And then I can do the same thing for total participation where I can actually copy that in as well. And it automatically updates. And that's another amazing feature of spreadsheet programs like Excel is that you can make, um, you can make formulas that when you copy and paste them, update themselves for additional cells. So I was able to add in an extra student and just super easily get in more data. Um, I can also change values. You saw me change values here. I can change values like maximum participation weeks possible to adjust all of these values that depend on this value right here. Um, points per participation week, I can change this to like a hundred and all of a sudden everyone's getting like a ton of participation like that, right? Um, here is where I probably went a little bit overboard. Um, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. I have, you know, week one, day one, week one, day two, week one, two, day one, week two, day two, right? Easy enough to type in, but I didn't. I have a formula here, which means I can automatically update the week and the day based on which column I want to bring it in. And if I want to go all the way out to week 16, I can do that. Um, really easily. There we go. I just need to put in one more. Bap. There we go. All the way out to week 16, day two, just by copy pasting. Um, I'm going to get rid of that very quickly. I have a similar thing going on with my help board as well, where I can just expand this out. Oh, one more, week 16. I can just expand that out like that, just by copying and pasting. And then I went even further because, um, you know, these students I just named with letter names, right? Uh, I can just do this because those letter names are also formulas. So I was able to convert those into letters. Excel lets you do a lot of stuff. It gives you a lot of power, maybe more power than one person should ever have, right? Uh, even actually does that. That's a very hidden unintended side feature. Um, yeah, it's a powerful system. It's so much fun. There's a lot of fun stuff you could do with this. If you're someone who really, really likes doing puzzles, who likes to like optimize and make workflows really, you know, tight and fast and efficient. If you've ever, if you play Zachatronics games, I don't know if anybody watching this will know what I'm talking about, but if you play Zachatronics games, you'll probably enjoy Microsoft Excel. So that's the software. That's a very brief introduction. This is some of the mad science you can do with it um, as you 
continue on learning it. And of course, we have, you know, we have this class where you learn Microsoft Excel. We also have the actual Microsoft Excel class where you really, really get into it. And I haven't actually, as of filming this video, I haven't actually met the professor who's teaching that, but I hear nothing but wonderful things about her. So highly recommend you check that out. There's also um, a class that also, as of the filming of this video, I should be teaching uh, starting in spring 2023, which is an introduction to Visual Basic, which is like using these formulas, but then you go even more wild with it. You get into actual programming with it. So if you end up liking that kind of stuff, keep it in mind. But yeah, brief intro to Excel.